everybody. My name is Filip Karmanov. I am the founder of Black Snowflake Games. Uh, uh, since 2013, working with trusted brands, we have produced uh, over 20 HTML5 games. And right now we are looking for instant games growth. Okay, thanks. Andre? Hi, my name is uh, Andre Krug. I'm one of the co-founders uh, of Soft Games. We have been into HTML5 gaming since 2014. We have released more than 450 titles. Uh, we currently have like 30 million monthly active users on our platform. We have about 10 million on Facebook Instant Games. And we believe uh, Instant Games are finally the, the chance for HTML5 games because it gives something to HTML5 games which was always missing and this is an ecosystem. So from our perspective, we now have to take care that we're fueling this ecosystem, that we're bringing out better games and we're just making this a giant success story which will disrupt the app stores. Okay, Arthur, please. Hey, my name is Arthur. Uh, I'm head of uh, games at Naklasniki and I was uh, promoting the uh, HTML5 game before it became the mainstream. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, probably that's it for now. Okay, uh, so first of all, let's define what's, what the instant gaming is. So uh, do you have like a definition for, is it a new word in gaming or is it just uh, already existing um, kind of games are just adapting for the platforms or what, what's from your point of view? Is it like really new? a uh, brand new thing here. Um, personally, I prefer to divide the instant games term into two categories. The first one is directly tied with chat features, such as Facebook One, or original instant games. And the second one is more like just a game section and social app, without forcing the player to use chat, such as upcoming contact as dark games. But both are technically HTML5 games based on JavaScript and Canvas. Uh, the first category has a very big virality, because in order to play a game, you need to send a direct message to another user. The second one, unfortunately, currently lacks this feature. But the current moment, there are more space for gameplay types. For example, not only short PvP sessions, relatively short PvP sessions, on Odno Classic chat platform. Uh, okay. When speaking about uh, ICQ or Skype games, as it uh, sometimes mentioned that there was uh, games like uh, modern instant games in Skype and ICQ, and now there are no games, uh, the big reason that instant games uh, will be hit is mobility. Uh, for example, uh, obviously, Angry Birds would not become such a hit. It, it was developed back in 2005 and was targeted to PC gamers. Yeah, but we'll get back to this a little bit later, ah, okay? Yeah. So just, like, do you think it's a brand new market and brand new type of games right now? Yeah, it's clearly a new concept. Okay. So, okay. Um, so when asking or when being asked about a definition for instant games, um, I think it's, it's, it's mostly about... Um, a frictionless way to discover, share, play games, which are cross-platform, so completely independent from your device, what you're using, uh, and instantly, meaning you can access it without any download, without any installation, you don't have to worry about anything, you just play. Yeah, I think that's actually the, the Insta Games is like the best way to create a habit to play games for non-gamers. Yeah. Like, um, as probably everybody knows about this, uh, this story about the find the cat, I like to t talk about it. But probably this Insta Games is the second part of this story. Like where Insta Games uh, are for the game for the players who never played before. Okay, so basically, uh, this is a not new type of game. This is a new channel, just to bring new users to to, to gaming itself. It's like it's not about the sites; it's about how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, great. So, um, uh, Philip has already started a little bit uh, speaking about the like types of those instant games because uh, this there is really a big diversity right now, and um, some of the games are defined as instant games, but they are actually more like demo games. So they are not uh, the similar ones. Uh, what? types of games are the best fitting for, for instant gaming? What uh, genres and what like kind of games are the best uh, option for this? Uh, well, obviously we're talking about uh, casual games with short gameplay sessions relatively short and uh, competitive elements like online scoreboards or daily challenges. Uh, not in the degenerated ones which is conferences mostly about. Sorry guys. 
idea that it would be a mix of uh, simple arcade gameplay and uh, social features, which, uh, when speaking about uh, native mobile games, can be met in such games like Clash of Clans, for example. You might ask, why not just make Clash of Clans in HTML5, but better? <laughs> and where is that where technical part is coming? Mobile HTML5 games must be optimized. For example, in class tier 6, chat game size to 3 megabytes, and contacts I will uh, recommend not to exit around 6 megabytes. Uh, so the, it would be small games, relatively. Casual games, arcades, I, much, free, much free, you know. Okay, Andrew, and you already have uh, several instant games, and uh, please tell us what, what the genres are and what is the most popular one? Um, I mean, for um, when you're speaking about Facebook instant games, I believe you're referring to, um, we have three games live there. So one is uh, the official license from Taito, which is the Space Invaders, which is a very, very simple arcade game. Uh, yeah. Um, we have another puzzle type, which is like a 2020 game, and we have one uh, where you need to stack up some towers, which is which is quite similar to to, to the one from 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 Catch App. Um, to be completely transparent. However, when we develop those games, um, we're trying to see what kind of SDK features are there available for Facebook. And being one of the launch partners, I mean, which is always nice, but you have to deal with a not ready, not feature complete platform. You need to do a lot of pioneering work. You need to find your way around some, some, some edgy things. Um, at the moment, I believe, um, and that's, that's, that's my personal um, opinion, of course, that we're already past this stage of very simple games. This doesn't make any sense anymore. There's tons of HTML5 games out there. There's tons of arcade simple games there. Um, and people are actually getting, you know, not sick of it, but they're not staying interested in this. And that's the same case for instant games. So you need to find ways to retain your users. You need to find ways to engage them. So as, as Philip said, with some leaderboards or some, some, I don't know, some weekly competitions or some gacha mechanics. So more enriched games. We're way past this point of just, I don't know, uh, having a fluffy bird and then everybody will, will play it forever. It's nothing special anymore. Okay, so... Uh, Arthur, please tell us, like, you already have uh, different uh, kind of games, and what is, like, the most popular one that, uh, like, top charts for you? And For now we have uh, very few games, so the, um, obviously the most popular one is the one we launched the first one, <laughs> just because uh, it has had more traffic. Um, but the question was, uh, what's the uh, definition of the Insta games? Well, the you original what, one. What, yeah, and what types of and genres of instant games uh, are like the most suitable ones? I would tell that uh, the games without tutorial, first of all, uh, like if your game had need to you know, had to have the tutorial, probably it will not be an instant game because it's too hard. Uh, and the second one, actually, I'm um, agree. I can agree with Andrea because. Uh, uh, just the simple games, the clicker games without uh, uh, some kind of the aim or the competition or something like that is not interesting anymore. Uh, even if it's Flappy Bird, you need to provide some kind of the, I don't know, maybe the uh, weekly, uh, weekly contest, the highest score, the month's monster or something like that. Okay, so we uh, t have spoken about what kind of games. Uh, and now, like, the most um, interesting question for everybody, and I guess, like, those guys uh, who are watching us, uh, the main question that they have, so where's the money? So are there any money in these games right now? So um, um, I think maybe we can start uh, with you guys because you already, like, have them launched and have the platform for them. So what about money? <laughs> um, so, when speaking about the, the big bucks, yeah, when getting, speaking about the big money which is there to be made, we currently have a state which is like a chicken and egg. What was first? Yeah? If you want to have the chicken, you need the egg. If you want to have the egg, you need the chicken. So you need to start at some point, and that's what I was um, trying to say in, 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 in my speech or when I'm talking to developers or whatsoever. It's about fueling this ecosystem. You need, if you believe in the technology, if you believe in the, the potential and the prospects in, in the future, you need to take at some point some pioneer role 
because um. <laughs> You're quite anyways. Um, the first ones who are, who are being educated on the SDKs, who are working with the channels, will be the first leaders, as we've just heard. Yeah. So there, what, whatever game that was, unfortunately, it's not from soft games, but um, they now have a unique standing point. Yeah. They have the most traffic because people are, oh, that's something that's new. So um, to answer your question quickly, where's the money? It is not there yet. It is not, we're not there yet where you release something and you're making thousands and ten thousands of dollars per day. It will come and you rather should see it as a developer as some kind of investment at the moment. But it's okay. not short term. Okay, uh, Philip, so if I'm an um, indie developer and basically I, um, like I eat what I make the games, yeah? So uh, if I invest, I might not eat like in in a month, yeah, because that's my money I live on. Uh, is it worth it, like, for you guys, are you ready to invest in this uh, in order to get some, um, I don't know, virtual money in s some day? Mm, well, for the, uh, as I said before, the only social networks which has monetization now is in a classic, but uh, with such huge man, uh, with such huge audience that almost no traditional marketing routine, there will be a way to monetize. And Donald Class definitely won't be the only ones with monetization. Terragram has already launched launch a payment API for bots yesterday. But what I'm really looking forward to is advertisement support. Currently, there are only in-app purchases in the class of contact, uh, which is in development, and in Telegram. Since central networks really don't allow to advertise uh, their third-party services, there should be a native solution, solution advertising for each one. Like, uh, for example, maybe my target for the class of contact. Uh, we are going to negotiate with contact regarding uh, implementing in-game in advertisement support to the API. But you, as a developer, you are ready to invest your yes, time yes, and course. your... Yes, We are investing in it since 2013. Like in HTML5 games yeah, yeah, in general? It, it pays good. Uh, yeah. Well, the, you mean like HTML5 pay yeah. good, but uh, and now you're ready to and invest instant game is, into... Instant games is just a new era of HTML5 gaming. The, okay. Back in 2013 or even 2014, when the first HTML5 boom happened, the main problem was that uh, technical support diversity among devices was a lack of good platform and a system to distribute. Creating one requires huge amounts of traffic. Now we have social network support. There are tons of users. Should I say more? So you mean like uh, HTML5 games uh, will have their reborn uh, in instant gaming, right? Yeah, of course. They, okay. In fact, they even haven't born yet. Well, I do not agree because we at Playtomax, like uh, in HTML5 development for five years already, uh, we do not yet have uh, any instant games and we are thinking about it because from our point of view, it's just like, well, is it worth it to invest uh, money right now? Because uh, nobody, nobody knows that. Even Facebook, as far as I know, they do not tell yet what kind of monetization will be inside. So will those be ads or will those be uh, in-app purchases or both? Nobody knows. So uh, like, th there are uh, different uh, like points of view on this subject. And um, for example, your through you have in-app uh, purchases in the games. Can you please tell us uh, a bit more what kind of uh, purchases are like the best ones because it doesn't work like for social gaming. Yeah. It's not the same, right? Um. <laughs> oh, it's working. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, uh, you know, I would like to answer more philosophical way uh, because the where is the money? And there is uh, all the same question when the new uh, industry is born. Like, uh, I can tell you the money is where the audience. Like, if you have the audience, you have the money. Uh, and you need to uh, learn how to get this money. Like, we had the same question when it was the uh, try before you buy system, where's the money? And the answer was create a good game. Uh, 
Uh, we had the same question when the uh, social game started, like the uh, Walton, etc. And uh, the answer was try to re retain, uh, increase your attention on the game, trying to monetize, etc., etc., etc. And the same question born uh, when the instant games appeared at the, the market. Probably we cannot answer this question right now, where is the money? But definitely we will learn how to get them. Uh, for now, I can tell you that probably uh, the most obvious way to earn money right, uh, I can see right now uh, is, uh, uh, first of all, you need to implement the PvP in the game. If it's, re uh, it's better if this uh, PvP is real-time, because when you, you have the real-time PvP, you, you feel the pressure. And it's much easier to sell something when you pre press to the user, and it's like not the game pressing to the, to the user, the opponent is pressing to the, to the, the user. So it's like uh, even the player will not be... Uh, uh, insulted by the game developer. For example, uh, quite interesting uh, case, like we had the game, uh, it's not uh, the uh, Insta games yet, but it's in a web desktop game. Uh, it's called the Find Differences. It's uh, Find Differences, well, probably you know the, uh, how it's work, you see the two pictures and you need to find the difference between these two pictures. And actually, this the PvP online game. Like you're uh, searching for the differences with the another guy, and uh, you can see what. Uh, like for example, each guy has the uh, slots with the differences, and then when you find one, the the slot is uh, colored with the green one. And you can uh, predict. Like if you have uh, one box is uh, colored with the green one, and your opponent uh, does not have this uh, box, uh, the same player is colored. Probably he did not find this difference. But if the other way. Uh, you can see that actually you already found this difference, but your opponent is not. Uh, you start to think that actually he will find it very soon, because for you it's obvious. Like, I already know where the difference. It's obvious for me that uh, it's out there and he will find it very soon. And that's a good timing to sell the uh, hint to this uh, player to, in order to complete the level. So that's one mechanic. Probably will work in the Insta games, because it has the pressure, it has the PvP, um, and it's fun. Okay, and for e already existing games, uh, do people pay I in instant gaming? In like, at the moment, are there any in-app purchases right now? There are, uh, but not much, right? So uh, you're saying that, um, as usual, I know that you're saying it uh, every time. So. Guys, developers, without you, there is no content and th th there are no players uh, paying money. So basically this is a circle. So the uh, developer comes and asks, where are my money? My money yeah? And you just tell them, soon, soon, soon. And it's kind of, where's the, like, where's the best solution for right. a developer to decide if to go for this? I mean, basically they're, they're two or let's say three options right now for a developer, right? One is to, to wait, to just see if it's gonna take off. Uh, should I invest my time? Should I uh, allocate resources? Um, you know, whatever. So this is the first option. Second option is, um, like, like Philip was saying, that they believe in this. So they're going there on their own, they're trying it out, they are improving the games based on the SDK iterations. Uh, and the third option is, I mean, just team up with somebody. Right? If you see someone, I don't know, so we have a lot of big companies here who are also uh, already investing into uh, instant games, who have the resources, who have the investment, who are talking to the different social platforms. So just team up with them, you know, just uh, try to learn as much as you can. Try to, uh, you know, be one of the first without putting all your eggs in one basket. But uh, is it that easy? I know that uh, Facebook is right now in a closed beta and a lot of uh, developers have sent uh, their games there, but they don't even get an answer. So uh, they are not even answering, guys, we received your application, even like no automatic reply. So the developer uh, feels like uh, he's not, uh, well, they, they don't need him. So there is no automatic even reply. So, uh, that's a bit disappointing. So, uh, should the developer contact someone personally in Facebook and say, "Hey guys, here are my games. Will they have a look at it if uh, if you find a direct contact in Facebook, for example?" No. Um, okay. So, should they go like to the publisher who has those contacts, and uh, that's the only way? 
it's for now it's it's the only way there is some certain um, app launching partners for, for Facebook speaking about Facebook um, but also we cannot launch every game there we also have to work very closely with the with the Facebook team we have to see that this is something what is beneficial to them as a platform it's the same way as it's beneficial to an okay because both or all social platforms they want to create this ecosystem so they need to find out first of all how do I retain my users how do I make them stick to the games because then at the end of the day it's exactly like like Arthur said where the audience is where they stick will be where the money is you know and this is always and speaking about Facebook then afterwards monetization comes it was the same way for Facebook was always free there were no ads and at some point when they were happy with the with the user experience and saw that people stick to it that they enabled advertisement in the in the time feed and everywhere else. This is like the usual step. Um, okay, and uh, Arthur, are you ready uh, to like give additional featuring for the instant games uh, on your platform? Are you ready like to give additional uh, traffic to those uh, games in order to uh, like um, invest in developers who are uh, developing those games Certainly. right now? Yeah, we, each game we're launching on an HTML5 platform whatever, if it's uh, Insta games or just the uh, uh, mobile web games, we're reaching it, uh, we're um, pushing to the quite big amount uh, of the audience, we're promoting uh, this game on the main page of Ethnoclastic on the web, on the main page uh, to the, of Ethnoclastic in, in the mobile version of the site and so on, yeah, definitely. Okay, great. And uh, is there a featuring in Facebook right now? Uh, like um, the top games or the new games, do they yeah, do this? They um, they introduce this so everybody can check it out. It's 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 no no secret. So if you go to the to the games, then you see at the top like the newest updated games. So um, at the moment, from I think there's there's the the Everwing game, some uh, from Zynga, some games. So those are featured right now because they're using the latest SDK features, mm -hmm. which is most important for them, which is most important for every platform. Because, you know, old games which don't use all the features, they're not beneficial for the platform. Because they want to learn, they want to get their proof of concept, if they're going in the right direction, if they're, you know, maybe making mistakes like everybody of us is doing. And that's why they're trying to push developers, publishers, whatever you want to call them, always to use the latest features, the latest, uh, you know, addictions or whatsoever. Mm, okay, so uh, for the developers who are here, yeah, so what are the um, like um, requirements for those games there is a technical uh, like uh, um, way and uh, i know that there are some restrictions they should know about it and also uh, regarding the development platform what uh, philip maybe would you recommend something to develop on the best way for the instant games well to be sure to as said before, me a lot of times, HTML5 or instant games are made with HTML5 and JavaScript, so it should be basically just to be ready to work with this. Do you if use I'll, some framework for that? Uh, yes, there are some frameworks, uh, both JavaScript and non-JavaScript, but uh, if I'll start discussing them, yes, there will be another hour for discussions, sorry. Okay, but just can you name the, like, ah, the main, yes. the, the most popular uh, if ones? You are going, if you haven't uh, developed HTML5 games before, I would recommend to use Phaser framework, as it's mostly common used nowadays and greatly optimized, but it's fully your choice. Okay, so uh, what about uh, other frameworks like Pixie.js and so on? So you would recommend to start from the phaser, right? Yes, right now I would recommend to start with, just because it's mostly documented for Pixie, as I remember, is a, a rendering engine, not the yeah. game one. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so and what about uh, restrictions, requirements? Uh, yes, one of the main restrictions right now is uh, what to use, uh, Canvas render mode or WebGL render mode. Uh, regarding this, we still stick to Canvas, because although WebGL has huge graphical powers, it's still not supported on many old but common devices, such as Samsung Galaxy S3. And we're trying to reach as wide as audience possible. possible. Okay, and guys, what uh, restrictions are, like, for, I know that you, uh, on the Glasnik, you have Three megabytes restriction, right, for the right. game, for the game itself, not the preloader, but the... Well, uh, it depends uh, to the game, but yeah, for now, it's about three, four megabytes. Uh, just in order to, well, Russian internet is not so fast. 
that's the axioma. <laughs> like, and you need to provide, we, and we call it the insta games, and it should be instant. And that's why it has to be very small for, from the very beginning. It can be instant loading, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but is it fair, like, developer uh, has to put everything in three megabytes, make really cool game, uh, include some, uh, like, features I in there, and still it should be, like, that small? Uh, does it affect, like, the quality of games? You know, it's the, um, that's the question of uh, how, what, what are you making this Insta game for? If you're making the Insta game as a short version of your big, uh, I don't know, HTML5 web game, that's one question, uh, story. If it's like just the, uh, uh, like only the Insta game, probably that's another story. And, you know, it's the Insta game is too young to generate some kind of restriction from the very beginning. Uh, and uh, stick to them to do all the times. So for now, it's three meg megabytes. Maybe, maybe it will be changed soon. Uh, as for me, I think that probably within a couple of months it will be just the three megabyte launcher, maybe. But for now, that's that's the rule. Okay, is it the same for Facebook? Um, sorry, uh, for Facebook, as, as as far as I know, it's it's a little bit higher. Um, but also, what we're seeing there is uh, whenever there are games which are which are larger. Uh, larger than 3 MB, this takes time to, to load. That's why I mean like it's instant loading, but it's not instant playing anymore. So you have to wait longer. Um, so no matter if you have some limit or you don't have some limit, um, the question is you sh maybe should not use all this MB size of 20 MB or whatsoever because it will take longer to load. Yeah, But streaming something can be more beneficial. Okay, and um, is there any statistics regarding like the bounce rate or whatever, like the like the dependence on the size of the game and its popularity and amount of like Maudao and so on. I think like um, I mean we we do have some some statistics um, there there internally unfortunately. <laughs> um, however, a game is not popular because it's small or it's it's big. Um, a game is not popular because it's, um, I think, real-time or, or turn-based um, PvP. A game is popular if it's fun. If it's fun to play, if it's fun to, to, to engage. Um, so game developers or publishers should firstly concentrate on, on creating a nice game. And this is um, not about 20 MB or 5 MB or 3 MB whatsoever. But um, if we're looking at the Flappy Bird, for example, the, ex um, the game, uh, we also had it as an uh, HTML5 game from, from the original developer, and this was just, I think, 600 kilobytes. It's a very, very simple game, yeah? and everybody played it. Nobody cared about the size. So, like, um, each conference, uh, there is this, uh, like, uh, slogan, uh, the main thing is to make good games. <laughs> so, it's you know, not. like, uh, even four megabytes, uh, when I was started uh, my career in the game dev, uh, it was a restriction of 20 megabytes for the try before buy the downloadable game. 20 megabytes for whole game. Uh, and uh, Plants vs. Zombies like games, what's 20 megabytes? And we are asking for uh, about 4 megabytes. That's one thief of the Plants vs. Zombies games. If you can provide me one thief of the Plants vs. Zombies. Okay, I see. And um, um, so, should the developers use an instant games like just standalone games and try to uh, earn some money uh, right now, for example, on Adam Classic, just on in apps? Or is there any way like they can use it as a maybe some help for, for their main games, like you were saying? Yeah, of course. Uh, the so, how should it work? For example, you have the much free game. And you can create the uh, Blitz version of this game. And after the user run on, out of all the lives during the gameplay on the Manchuri game, the main one, uh, the game can propose him to play the Blitz version of the game. Okay, uh, user launches the Blitz version, uh, chooses a friend, the game initiates a chat with this uh, user, uh, the friend answers you, plays the Blitz game, and the game, like the Blitz games, proposed to play the full version of the game. That's one point, of like, I don't know, we, let's call it advanced virality. So basically it's something like uh, playable ads they have right now, yeah. popular for, like, uh, in ads, uh, there are a lot of, like, 30-second mm -hmm. gameplays, and then it is uh, 
like an option to download the game. So basically it's the same, but within the one platform, within yeah. one yeah. environment, right? Okay, that's interesting. Um, I know that uh, a lot of um, developers that are here, they were like preparing for this session and they have a lot of questions, right, guys? I know that you were saying um, a lot of that, oh, that would be interesting to, to, to hear too, and that we'll have a lot of questions regarding this. Maybe you, that's the chance for you to get the information from the first person, with, from the guys who already have uh, uh, experience in this. So many questions. <laughs> Вопрос к Артуру. Сколько примерно получит игра, которая будет в Instant Games у вас там в каталоге? Ну вот, допустим, мы сделали игру, вы ее зарелизили, и сколько туда трафла нальется? Messenger games, the instant games. If you want to launch it as a mobile HTML5, if you have like single player edition of that, then uh, this number can grow up to uh, 200k of installs. Thanks. Hi there. I'm Alex. I'm UX lead and product call lead from Crazy Panda Games. And uh, I have a question. Um, do you, actually, I have um, some kind of judgment about this uh, all new instant games thing. Uh, I think the most appropriate way for now to use it as a traffic source for the big game actually here. So you can just tear off a part of your mechanics and just use it like an uh, advertisement screen, something like that, and not like the game itself in the messenger. Also, I think the best way to use instant games is to do some kind of gamification of social behavior, but not uh, the actual gameplay, like, you know, the king launched the cats game when you it was laggy on Androids, and it's not just the experience the users want to get yet. Uh, well, I can tell that probably yes from one point of view, but from the second point of view, have you ever been in school? <laughs> yep, sure. Yeah. Did you play the paper games, like the dots, the tic-tac-toe? Yeah, but do you understand that there are only one game tic tac toy. There are only one game mechanic like dots. Well, and actually, we the, don't have there any are around, I, I guess, 50,000 developers now pitching these kind of games. And this instantly overheat market, but not like. <laughs> uh, well, again, it's a question about the mechanics. Tic tac toy is only a mechanic, it's not a game. Match 3, it's only a mechanic, it's not a game. Um, dots, it's also mechanics. Uh, you can create a game on the basic mechanics. Even the, uh, I don't know how it's called, the uh, sea fight probably in Russian is Marsko Boy. Yeah. Uh, so they are, you can implement the bonuses, the power-ups and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you agree with the first part when I said you can drive traffic like uh, using instant games like uh, teaser for the whole game on the mobile phone? I actually don't. <laughs> Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> to bring some controversy in this discussion here. Um, I mean, it, it does make sense if... Um, if you have match three. If you have a match three game, you know, as an example. Um, your approach completely makes sense as long as you believe that this native version, what, what you were referring to, is much, much better than the instant games version. And at the moment, I would say, yeah, sure, go for it. But then once again, imagine you already have a user which is playing your match three game and now you want him to then once again change the context at some point because your instant match three game is limited. So he needs to th switch the context, then continue his f this full game. Why not at some point aim for a full instant games experience? This 
would be much more convenient, at least uh, how, how, how uh, we see it. Yeah, maybe I missed the first part because we were just around somewhere yeah. else. And uh, what's the way of monetization, basically, where you can pay? <laughs> We had, <laughs> I think we had this covered. Uh, I, I believe the bottom line was there are some already some some social platforms which are offering this, like uh, Naklasniki, for example, and um, there will be some some more very soon. Bottom line right now is we're at the hen and egg situation where we need to fuel an ecosystem, so monetization options are limited at the moment. Um, okay, but for you. Um as a publisher, yeah, you now gain a lot, a lot of users there. What's the lifetime of of those users and?